Hi again, everybody, and uh, today is our last class of the series of uh, current issues in leadership and change. And this class is devoted to managing relations. It's your job as uh, executive manager to managers to manage relations of your company. Why you must do this? How to do this? It's exactly the issue of our uh, this class. So why? The main idea is stability is gone. It used to be uh, possible to establish the kind of um, strong structure or organizational structure of your organization, long-term goals, and be kind of certain that you go step by step to these big goals, and you can use this established structure of all your employees, your product portfolio, and your competitive advantage for kind of a long run. But as we talked in previous classes, it's, it's, it's gone. First of all, our companies now, uh, they don't have like step-by-step -step development, many of them. Many of them, they have uh, rapid growth or stall. They grow and they slow down. They grow and they slow down. So they have to find something how to manage this and uh, I hope you uh, you have already watched my previous classes about uh, managing growth and uh, uh, managing developing of the company and new management approach in this unstable environment then again cares when your company is developing very fast or vice versa if it slowed down you have to change everything just immediately. You have to change it rapidly. And uh, people understand that they don't have any uh, predictability, any stability in their life, which they used to have many, I know, 50 years ago. So you have to, you have to accept these cares around your company and sometimes inside of your company because these cares gives additional energy for your company, additional creativity for your company, and of course, competitive advantage. So you must be able to manage these cares uh, instead of avoiding this. Then competition has changed in our world. Uh, say famous bookstores chain are closing right now. Why? They're still great book, uh, bookstore chains, but now we have Amazon.com, we have eBay, uh, etc. And these unexpected quarters just changed everything in um, competition. Uh, let's say small geographically isolated community, which has one serious store, clo clothes store, uh, it used to be that people come here for their goods, for their, I know, for something, for everything what they need, for their houses, for their furniture, for their other stuff. Now they buy it online. So unexpected quarters um, offer their uh, contribution to this competition. And again, we have to react somehow. No job security for employees and no job security for managers because their employees consider sometimes uh, this job like their, um, their project, their project to build their own career. The loyalty of employees goes down. Again, not in your particular organization, but in the world itself. Uh, again, personnel consider themselves as free agents, which just free to make their choice, maybe, I know, every second year, or even consider your company like a um, part of their project portfolio. That's why CEO becomes not just general managers, but uh, venture capitalists. They consider these uh, employees like part of their portfolio of the projects which they can manage. And again, new product comes every day, new product come every day, new generations. Sometimes we don't understand these young people and they are great. They're so creative and they have different um, attitudes. They have different expectations and they work differently. So what I want to say with this slide, first of all, I want to remind you my our previous classes because I, I'm sure that you kind of know about this. And I want to relate 
the, the previous classes about grow uh, about managing growth, about managing cares, about new approaches in management uh, to this to this class and shows that here is the reality of new management. We might like this reality, we might not like this reality, but if we want to be successful as managers, as employees, if we want to build successful business or successful non-profit organization, we must, we must expect, accept this. On the other hand, of course, we want to protect our companies, we want to protect our business, we want to protect our employees. Uh, so, how to do this? We have this and we have this. This is the reality and this is what we want to have. I believe the bridge between what we have, this cares, growth, stall, no job security, etc., and our wish to build some great place for work for our employees and the great business which we like and non-profit organization we want to develop is social. Today we will discuss the role of social relations in reducing ambiguity and uncertainty. We define social capital, what social capital is about, and we discuss benefits and risks of social capital. Then, social capital, <clears throat> we will discuss this. Ah, first of all, we have a stakeholder view, which I am positive that you know from your uh, strategic management classes or from your marketing classes. Uh, we try to relate this to concept in your mind, stakeholder view and social capital view. Then we discuss social capital like uh, very uh, in detail. First, social capital as a common good and as a private good. Second, social capital and levels which social capital has. Sources of social capital, so outputs for social capital, inputs for social capital, and the results output. And at the end, uh, I provide you the result of my research. It's an output-input model of social capital, which gives you very specific how-to recommendations. What exactly you, as a leader of your business or non-profit organization, must do, ex is expected to do, to establish strong social relations around your business and inside of your business, which, of course, will protect your business from some unexpected changes. And uh, we finish our class with two important parts, how to study social capital and what is the most important, how to invest to social capital.